Okay. Let's talk about what brings you here. I'm looking for um, a boyfriend. And I haven't dated since 1990. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, well there wasn't changed, texting, yeah. internet dating. Yeah. A lot has changed. What is your ideal guy? What would yeah. he be like? Uh, really tall, handsome, great job, likes kind of quirky, sassy, and someone to make out with. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. She's honest. All right. What about this look says it's, that it's you? Yeah. It's uh, sparkly, busy, fun. And did you always dress like this? You know, frankly, before. My husband it wasn't as yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you had a touch of quirk, maybe, yeah. while you were with your well, your husband. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, I think that maybe we should take you back to that. All right, I think we should take a look at your yes. online dating profile. So this is a composite from your various dating sites. Yeah? Yep. I totally wanted those glasses. <laughs> the Amelia Earhart special. I mean, it's one thing to like take a kooky picture of yeah. yourself, it's another thing to put it on a dating Yeah, it's site. not a dating profile photo. Okay. It's my Miami look. That's Miami grandma yes. making <laughs> sauce on Sunday. Yes, it is. With cataracts. Yeah. My God. <laughs> Let's just take a look at some of your status updates. How much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's more. The hits keep coming. How do you make a tissue dance? You put some boogie in it. Paige, no! Your profile is filled with wacky pictures and wacky status messages. A lot of guys are looking at your profile thinking that you're just wacky all the time. If you're pushing other people away, that's not getting you what you want. When you are in control and you think through what you post, what you share with others, then you have more control of that energy that you're bringing back to you. Would you say that this profile is an accurate representation of who you are? It is on the quirkier side. I don't think you know the difference between quirky and kooky, and there's a big difference there, okay? Oh, are you all right? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, well, that's okay. It's okay, come here. Yeah, well, let's, okay. We have a tissue. I'm so sorry, this happens you... all the time. I'm all right. sorry. Don't worry about it. If we're ever hitting a nerve that's no, like no, no, too no. tender, this is just let normal. it normal. I feel like my my late husband wasn't the average American man. So now that I am faced with the average American man, it's yeah. very confusing. It sounds like your husband maybe was kind of the balance for you. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we're your team and we're here to help you get get your balance back. Okay. <laughs>
everything that you post online, whether it's a picture or a status update, is a marketing strategy to, toward marketing yourself. Oh, that's so depressing. What happened to just eyes meeting across the room and chariots of fire playing and... Yeah, no, that's dead, dead, dead. Never yeah. going to happen again. Um, this uh, is, it is the way, but it's kind of fun if you think about it. Like you get to be your own marketing expert for the best product in the whole world. And so you put yourself out there the best way possible. And you are very straightforward. You have to be straightforward, like demanding, you know, telling people what it is you're looking for. If you're not looking for a one night stand, you have to say, I am not looking for a one night stand. So don't even bother hitting me up for that, you know? What is the absolute number one most repetitive mistake that people make? Boobs, 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 boobs. In boobs. pictures, in outfits, yeah, all around. Uh, you know, uh, women, uh, and I get it, you know, you got boobs and you want to yes, show them off yes. and they're, you're proud of them. That's great. And, you know, Men like them. Straight men like them particularly. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, if you lead with... So the I've heard, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you lead with the boobs on your online dating profile, you're getting men riled up. Okay? You got a lot of... It gets them all, like, frothy and get, they get dizzy mm -hmm. and then they text you for sex. And you're like, why do guys keep texting me to have sex only? It's like, because you're leading with the boobs. So that's the biggest mistake we've seen over and over and over again. Do you think that, especially for women, it's easy to get caught in the trap of selling a package that doesn't exist? Like, I love watching football and eating hot dogs and going to baseball games and guzzling beer and going on road trips when really you just want to sit at home and read a book. Um, yeah, well, you, know, you could lie, I guess. I mean, that's, people have been lying for a long mm -hmm. time when it comes to, like, finding a mate. Um, and I guess it's easy to do online, but eventually you're going to have to meet the person face to face. There's a lot of false advertising out there. There are a lot of women, uh, and I guess some men too. Everybody takes the selfie from way up here. You know, it's like I look great, like yeah. that, right? And they crop that photo just right under their chin, or they, you can't tell what their body looks like at all. Or they post photos from like 10 years ago online, and then they go meet for coffee, and the, the guy's like, "Who are who are you? I thought I was meeting the hot chick." Yeah, I uh, before long before I met my husband, I went on, a, on an online date, and uh, the guy told me he was an avid runner, and we could like run the reservoir together. And I get there, and he was like 300 pounds, and he was like, "Well, I was a runner in college." <laughs> right. And I'm like, "Oh, well, thanks." <laughs> right. Yeah, and I wore diapers when I was one. Yes. You know, it's like. <laughs> uh, like what um, what was so when someone comes? First of all, how do you find these people? I assume they go online and they apply. Right. So we did 22 episodes, mm -hmm. uh, 22 half-hour episodes. And because it was a new show, we had our casting department basically troll all the online dating sites. Did you pay them a lot of money? Yes. I, I hope so. <laughs> a decent amount. <laughs> and so we would look for women whose profiles were just hot messes, mm -hmm. uh, making some of those really basic mistakes. And then message them and say, we have a new show for TLC. Would you have any interest in being made over by Clinton Kelly? That's and, awesome. Uh, could you imagine that? You're like, I thought I was looking good. And then it's like, Clinton Kelly wants to make you over. <laughs> You're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, did, and for the most part, did people take your advice? Or were there people who were like... There were a few people who were like, hmm. but um, for the most part, they did. Uh, you know, I'm pretty good, after doing makeovers for all of these years, I'm pretty good at helping people find a style that mm -hmm. reflects who they really are. Like, I'm not just about, like, you know, here's a pump, and here's, you know, a structured jacket, and you should be wearing this. Like, you know, even though you work in a bar, uh, I'm not going you know, to put you in a pantsuit. You know, like, so I'm really good about, these days about helping people find the style that really reflects their true uh, personality. So that's been fun for me. You know, the biggest challenge in styling people nowadays uh, tattoos. Uh, when oh. I first started What Not to Wear, people had tattoos. There were some tattoos. People are very heavily tattooed right now. Oh, I didn't think and, about that. Huh? You know, it's fine. Uh -huh. You can do whatever you want. It's your body. But a lot of times, tattoos will fight with the styles that you put them in. You're like, oh, uh, this dress cuts off your teddy bear tattoo in half, and that's weird that he's looking over your There's bust like now. There's like a paw. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> so the weird things like that are happening now. But other than that, like the makeovers went really well. And do you keep in touch with people? Uh, yeah, some of them. And so, uh, are there success stories? There are people. They've all the people I kept in touch with out of the twenty-two. I probably kept in touch with about ten. Okay. On social media, and they have said that it's been uh, a wonderful experience for them. It really was illuminating, um, which is great. I don't know if they've found love yet necessarily. Which but you can't guarantee anyway. Can't I mean, guarantee if you can get to do that, I'll, I, put, you know, I'll pay you a lot of money if you can, like, you know. Yeah, do I don't want to do that. Like, I have no matchmaker. I just yeah. want to put you in a cute little outfit and kick your ass out the door. Ooh, sorry. And do you uh, do you guide them on um, it, like can they text you in the middle of a date? And be like, oh my God, this is a disaster. What to do? I got a life. I mean, I, I'm not doing. <laughs> don't text me. I, 
<laughs> you know, it's, I will see, I'll, when you're on the show for two days, I will give you my undivided attention, and then you're leaving my, you know, apartment and get out of here. Um, so, yeah, I don't give dating advice either. I'm not sure I should give dating advice. I mean, I you're give... You're happily married. I mean, I'm you did something, married. right? It's very different being a 46-year-old gay man than it is to be, like, a 25-year-old straight woman. I'll accept right? that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, it's just, it's interesting talking to you because Aziz Ansari's book, Modern Romance, dealt with this very, well, not this very same issue, but a very similar issue, how dating and relationships have changed with the advent of the internet. Yeah. And what would you say has been the biggest change? Is it that you have access to so many more people than by going to your neighborhood bar? Yeah, there's that. I think it's the first impression. So, you know, people have said, like, first impressions are everything, but I think about it just... I don't know, maybe five years ago, ten years ago, first impressions meant, oh, I talked to this person for five minutes, mm -hmm. and that was my first impression of him or my first impression of her. Now it is literally, first impressions don't even last a second, not one second. As you're going through your phone, next time you see and you're swiping, you're swiping in less than a second on each person. So you don't even have one sixtieth of a minute to make a first impression. And that, that is a game changer. That means that your picture, your profile picture, has to stand out from the rest of the crowd in some way that it never had to before. So number one rule for a profile picture? It should look like you, but the best version of you, you should, it should be a headshot for your main profile mm -hmm. picture, and you should be smiling and maybe wearing something cute. You know? uh, but your, your profile picture should capture your essence, if that makes sense. Like, Man, that's hard. That's <laughs> <laughs> everything no it, everything you're saying makes total sense but it's like how do you like I'm, it's, I'm sure it's awesome with you there doing it but like when you're just having wine with your girlfriends and uh yeah well wow it's if you're you know you have friends who are single too you got to help each other out you know it's like be like you know you can't tell your friends nowadays oh girl you look great in that dress and then be like oh man she looks like a hot mess <laughs> you got to like help help a, help a sister out you know so like Learn, learn the best lighting, like outdoor lighting is generally better than mm -hmm. indoor overhead lighting, you know, like know your angles. I, now, I, I, my motto has always been wear something cute and don't take any crap. And then I hit 40 and it became know your lighting, know your angles. So, uh, so and, basically be Mariah Carey. <laughs> totally. I mean, does. just in, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the woman knows her lighting and she, she knows her angles. Does, like yeah. that's, yeah. <laughs> 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 We're not giving up. No, don't, don't go be Mariah. No. Um, and in terms of your, you know, like the f the poop jokes and the the bear jokes, what if you have one sentence to kind of grab someone, what should it say? Yeah, well, my co-host Devin talks about this. You should have a tagline on your online mm -hmm. dating profile, which is just one sentence about 140 characters long that just sums up who you are in an original kind of way. So you should talk about the kinds of interests that you have. Um, try to be funny if you are a funny person. Um, and just, you know, be kind of straightforward with it. You know, it's like, it's so hard to say. Like, I, I can't give a general rule for it that, that's for everyone, but it's about being true to your, it's about putting your best foot forward in as quickly as possible. Like, that's everything now is so fast. So one picture has to sort of show the world who you are. One sentence has to tell the world who you are, or at least uh, incite them to click on you or swipe on you. And I actually think it's, it's, like, your show's pretty inspiring. I mean, I, you know. Well, thank you. I, I think it's, if nothing else, I mean, imagine, you know, like, I live in a neighborhood where it's nothing but married couples with kids. Like, if I relied on that to meet someone, I would be yeah. my, my yeah, cat for a very long time. Right. So, you well, know. Especially professional people. Yeah. It's like, you are, some people work 10, 12 hours a day, and then what are you supposed to do? Like, go out to a bar and, like, hope to meet somebody? This, you know, online dating is a great way to sort of expedite the whole process, uh, meet people you might not run across uh, mm -hmm. otherwise, and this is so, it, it can be really fun. And, you know, I want to impress upon women, you have so much more power than you think you have. You know, like, you're in control of your own message. Like, you're not, you don't, don't leave it up to anybody else. Like, you are in control of marketing you. And sure, that sounds daunting, but it's also powerful if you think about it. It's like, you don't know, nobody's telling you what to do. You get to do it for yourself. Should you decide ahead of time before you leave the house uh, how you're going to handle yourself that evening, like whether you're going to go home with someone or not, whether if the person misrepresents themselves, do you just get up and leave? I mean, what's your, or do you give it a chance to play out? You know, I think that, uh, you know, I believe in like living in the moment, mm -hmm. feeling the experience, like if you want to, you know, go 
if you want to go all the way on the first date, that's yeah. your right to do if you want to do that. But if, if that's against your morals, then you should like go into the date knowing that that's not what you're going to do. It's about communicating before you get to the date itself. I think that a lot of women make the mistake of meeting somebody for coffee after a few text exchanges. You know, Devin uh, is, is a big proponent of having an actual telephone conversation with the Ugh, person. What is that? I know, right? But make him call you. Have him call you, talk to you on the phone for five to ten minutes before you get your ass out of the house and meet him for coffee because you're going to know more over yeah. the phone than you would be a text. It's like the text is the first step, the phone is the next step, and then the meeting in person is the third. And in terms of, so you have like your awesome profile picture that's a headshot, best light, a Mariah Carey. You're, you're going right. to do the Mariah yes. Carey for your headshot. Yes, channel Mariah. And then what about... Um, the other your, photos? The, yeah, it? like a, isn't it like usually like three or four that you can have where I guess... Yeah, maybe, I think I you mean, can have up to five and some. Yeah. So you should have a, a, a profile shot, a headshot, a full body shot. You should have some sort of action shot, meaning that... It's a picture of you engaging in some sort of activity like that you like. Like hiking or swimming yeah, or like what, what have it, you. What's your passion? Yeah. You know, like show it through pictures. Um, a group shot to show that you actually have friends is another important thing. Uh, <laughs> but the group shot is tricky because it's like sometimes women look just like their friends. You know, you sort of tend to hang out in a crowd that looks like you. So it's like a lot of times we'd see women who would be like, you know, a blonde with shoulder length hair and, you know, wearing a cute sparkly top. And she's in a picture with her best friend who's also a blonde with yeah. shoulder-length hair and a cute sparkly top. And you're like, who's the one on dating? And also the it? guys, like if guys pose in pictures with girls, then it's like either you're a player or, I mean, you don't know if that's his sister. So, right, you know, yeah, yeah. Know. Guys, we're, we're finding that guys have a tendency to post a lot more group shots mm -hmm. than women do. You know, it's like, it's like they want to show, like, I'm so popular. Mm -hmm. I have lots of dudes to hang out with. I don't really need you all that much. So action shot, friend shot, full body shot, and what about the other two? Head, with the head shot head was shot. one. I'm forgetting the other one. See, I do the makeovers. Devin, Devin does oh, the, Devin uh, does the profile okay. stuff. Yeah. Um, in terms of what you wear on the first date. Yes. What do you wear on the first date? Yes. Well, it depends on the situation. I mean, let's assume you're not going to go mountaineering. Let's assume you're going to go to uh, Gorilla Coffee. Okay. All right. Coffee date would be, you know, you should wear something that you would normally wear in life. You know, this is the thing, like, be a, the best version of you. But, like, a coffee date, you could wear a great boot, you could, could do a cute jean, a top that's got a little visual interest somehow, mm -hmm. and a great leather jacket. You know, there you go, that's a great coffee date kind of look. Um, and, you know, my advice, again, is sort of keep the cleavage, especially during the daytime, to a minimum. It's like, if you're looking for hookups, go right ahead and show a lot of skin. But if you're not looking for hookups and you don't want to give the guy the impression that you're looking for hookups, just... You know, you can still show that you've got a body without showing skin. I think that's, that's a huge mistake. So, like, don't over, don't, like, yes, you want the guy to know that you're sexy. You have the, you know, the capability to be sexy. But you don't need to show that on the, the first meeting with somebody. That's very, I'm still pondering this. This is like I, It's very, a lot to take in. I'm not, not going to lie. It's just, things have changed so much. And I know I sound like an old fart, but, you know. Yeah. They did. <laughs> Things. This is life. You either have to go uh, with it, or you get right, trampled. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's turn it over to the audience. Come on, guys. Hit Clinton up with your toughest. Give me a question. Toughest dating questions. Hi, I have a question. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. I'm such a huge fan from thank the you. What Not to Wear days from like over ten years ago. Such a good show. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I work on the Style Me Pretty and SMP Living team, and I know we do a lot of work with your wedding brands and Macy's stuff. Yes. Um, and I wanted to know two, I have two questions. Okay, go right ahead. Um, the first question is, how did you parlay your expertise and your own career kind of into this TV media mogul personality <laughs> that you are today? And my next question is, what are three tips you would have for um, brides when it comes to being yourself but still kind of having that wow factor on your big day? Okay, good question. All right, so as far as who I've become sort of brand-wise, um, this is, it's, a real, it's kind of a difficult question for me to answer, but I'll tell you, I learned a lot in doing What Not to Wear. I, after I got What Not to Wear, and I, was, I had been a magazine editor for years, and I was sort of like ready for a change. I didn't know what the change was. The What Not to Wear opportunity basically landed in my lap. Uh, a casting agent called me out of the blue. I took the audition. I got the job. Ten years later, you know, uh, it was like, whoa, I can't believe that just happened. But halfway through it, I was like, I don't know if this is really, like, what is my purpose in doing this show? What I realized, what kept me going on what not to wear was the fact that I love 
helping people be the best version of themselves. Like it really makes me happy to empower them. And clothes have power. They help you find uh, a better job. They help you find a different group of friends if that's what you want. They help you find the love of your life. So there is a real power in that. And I've been able to just like focus on what I love about doing what I do. Like the power behind the clothes. It's not. I don't really care what celebrities wear, quite frankly. And it's. I like looking at runway shows, but I don't live for like what's Balenciaga going to put down the runway. I like helping real women, and so that's what energizes me. So I've been able to go to these projects that really like make me happy, and I'm really, I'm incredibly fortunate to be able to do that from a financial standpoint. Like I don't just have to take jobs for the money. So what I'm able to do is just focus on things that I love doing, and so all these things have just all these opportunities have presented themselves because of that. Like I love cooking, and I love entertaining. And then the two came to me. I'm a big believer in this, the whole concept of like the law of attraction. Like what you put out there, it really, it does come right back at you, big uh, full steam ahead. Uh, the second question about what brides can do as far as making their day like unique to them. You have to decide, a lot of brides are like, they want a certain kind of wedding, and then the people paying for the wedding, sometimes it's their parents, have very strong ideas about how the wedding should be thrown. I think if you want your own wedding to be uniquely you, you either have to say, you know what, mom and dad, we're going to pay for this on our own, or look, we have to come to a compromise. You have to realize that this is my wedding. So have a very frank discussion with whoever's paying for the, for the uh, wedding. Number two, communicate with each other. So many times, brides, it gets all, they get all worked up about, this is the vision that I've had in my head since I was 12 years old. Well, guess what? You're 30 years old right now. Get over it. Like, this is a, you know, and, and, the, and the, the groom, you know. <laughs> Swans will not, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you will not ride down an elephant. Yeah. The yeah. giant pumpkin is not going to roll yes. down the street, you know. So, like, have a talk with your, your fiancé and say, like, what is it that you really want? And number three, like, throw the rule book out the window. It's like, it doesn't, like, people just want to go to a wedding to have fun, Focus on the fun and about the experience of it. Nobody really remembers the chick, whether they had the chicken or the fish at your wedding three years later. That's not the thing. Make sure that you have a great opportunity for people to relax and have a good time and celebrate the union, not the, not the evening. Does that make sense? Does that help? Okay, thank you. <laughs> with regard from, to, with Love at First Swipe, are you planning on doing any shows with gay men or even straight men? Because there's a lot of gay men profiles that are pretty tragic. Uh, yes, <laughs> I know. It's like whenever, it's, if I've got a straight friend, I'm like, give me your Tinder. If I've got a gay friend, I'm like, give me your grinder. I've got to see what's going on. Just to look, just to look. Um, but I would love to, quite frankly. Like, I think this 22-episode series is going to be a nice start for the show. Like, if it takes off, when it takes off, and it's a success, I would love to see us doing, you know, a gay version, lesbian version, like a male trans version, version, like a trans yeah. version. I'll, I'll do it. I want to. I want to help everybody find love. You know, so whoever wants a dog do, version would be nice. Oh, <laughs> do your friends, by the way, hit you up all the time? Like, if you're at a dinner party, do, uh, do your friends like give you their phones, being like, "Hey, check this out. What do you think?" Um, when we're drinking, this, this okay. happens. So, oh, I would imagine was, that would get quite annoying after a while. Funny story about this, because uh, I was on my friend Shannon's phone, um, and I was choosing guys for her, and Tyra Banks was on her male friend's phone choosing women for him. So Tyra and I were laughing when we saw each other on the two. Uh, it was like, we might have set each other up on, <laughs> on Tinder accidentally. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you had a question in the front row? Yeah. You're my first live anything. Uh, really? Well, th I'm, uh, um, thank you. <laughs> um, your 22 episodes, do any of them deal with men? And if so, how is your approach to the transformation or the advice different? You don't focus on cleavage. Right. <laughs> well, here, none well of actually, I will say Kanye does have a thing for male cleavage. I mean. I did not know that. Oh, my God. Have you seen some of his shirts? Oh, no. I, I try mean, to avoid Kanye. But, I mean, yeah. but it's like men do have, like, there's some men who really go for the cleaves. Right. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. Let's, I think the equivalent would probably be, like, really tight pants, though. <laughs> uh, so, we, uh, in the 22 episodes, we did not focus on men at all. Because there's a part of the show where um, we show the woman's profile to 100 men. And so we have this 100 men sort uh -huh. of, the team of 100 men sort of set up, so it's easy for us to like blast them with the, with, the, with the woman's profile. We'd have to set up 100 women to do that, so for one episode it wouldn't make sense. But here's the thing about making over men. I, it's just not as, it's not as gratifying to me, like doing female make, I've done male makeovers and female makeovers. The female ones are just, they're more fun, quite frankly, um, and they're more emotionally gratifying because I think women put, 
they put more stock in their appearance, and they've just been, been raised differently. Like, I think women have been raised to really want to be beautiful. You know, there's so much social pressure on women to want to look and feel beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's not the same with men. Like, men, men want to be handsome, but it's yeah, not Yeah, like and men are raised to, like, wear deodorant, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, like oh, I showered today. Aren't you lucky? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go back there, and you're going to do my profile now. All right, great. Let's no, do I'm it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even have one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, thank you so much. It's really a, a brave new world out there. It's been my and, pleasure. And uh, thank you for shedding light on it. Anytime. Thanks, guys.